Hi, welcome to Creative Ramblings. In this episode, I'd like to give you some tips on how to prepare for an outdoor art exhibition or art fair. Since I recently participated in the Toronto Outdoor Art Exhibition, I wanted to share my experiences. I will be talking about the preparations for an outdoor event, but some of these tips will work for indoor events as well. Depending on the location of your show, you're going to have to figure out how to transport your artwork to the show and also from your vehicle to your booth. For the Toronto event, we had built a crate for that purpose that would also double as a table inside my booth. And while the crate worked out perfectly, it was a little heavy and also a little bit bulky to work with. So next time I think I would prefer to buy those reusable bio bags in combination with a foldable dolly. Now you're also going to need a tent. For the Toronto event I chose to rent one, but I've decided to probably do some more in the future, so next time I'm definitely going to buy one. If you're planning on doing multiple events, it's definitely worth the investment. Now, if you're a visual artist like me, you're going to need a hanging system for your paintings. I rented a metal wireframe, which worked out perfectly, but I saw many ingenious solutions at the exhibition. So next time I think I will go for a plastic chicken wire attached to my booth with Velcro. After attaching the hanging system to my booth, I covered it up with gray bed sheets hanging from PVC pipes, just to give the walls a nice finished look so the hanging system wouldn't distract from the paintings. And of course you're going to need some hardware to hang everything from. I use these metal chain link wires, which I bought at the hardware store. I also used a lot of tie wraps, which are handy for everything. And then to hang my paintings, I used these S-hooks. I would just punch a hole through the fabric at the place where I wanted to attach the S-hook to the metal frame. And then I would hang the painting from the S-hook. Now I found that it was very easy to attach a tie wrap uh, to the wire on the back of your painting, just so you can slightly adjust the height uh, that the painting is hanging, so you can align everything properly. I chose to make a mock-up of my booth up front so I knew the placement of all of my paintings, which definitely helped the speed of my setup and it's something I would definitely advise you to do. Make sure you have price tags for all of your merchandise. You can attach those to your cloth using fun tag or safety pins and I would definitely suggest you bring some extra empty ones in case you need to change something or you accidentally forgot one. I created a banner for the outside of my booth that showed my name as well as my website. And I also created some smaller signs that showed QR codes for my Facebook page, my website and my YouTube channel, just so it was easy for people to see how they could find me. You're also going to need a table to display some smaller merchandise like prints and cards. I use my crate, but any fold-out table will do. And you should definitely bring some cloth to cover the table so it looks nice. Now make sure you place your table strategically so it doesn't block off the entrance to your booth. You do want people to come in there. Now we were very, very lucky to have a weekend filled with sunshine in Toronto. But of course that's not always the case with these outdoor events. So you should always be prepared for rain. I bought these uh, transparent shower curtains at IKEA for like $2 and I also bought this uh, clothesline at the dollar store so I could easily attach this to my booth. And of course you're also going to need like a clear plastic sheet to cover your table as well. Now while we all hope to sell at shows like these, getting exposure for your work is one of the additional benefits. So to get as much exposure for your work as possible, you should bring lots and lots of business cards. You should put them on your table where people can easily grab them while they're walking by. And it's also good practice to remind the people who came into your booth to take one as they leave because most of the time they will forget. Now you also want to bring a book or a sign up sheet so people can sign up for your newsletter, which is a great way to extend your address book. Now another thing that I did to increase my exposure was that I created these t-shirts for both me and my husband who was nice enough to help me run my booth. They have an image of my work on the front and then my website address and logo on the back. Not only did they make me recognizable, they also gave my website as well as my work some extra exposure while I was walking around. And as an extra bonus, I didn't have to think about what I was wearing for the entire weekend. Which was awesome because I already had too many other things to worry about. Because you want to be selling at an event like this, you should definitely remember to bring some change. I kept mine in a money belt around my waist. And it's definitely to your advantage if you can handle credit cards. I know I would have lost out on some of the bigger sales if I wouldn't have been able to do that. I use Square to handle credit cards, which is this 
tiny little device that you can plug into your phone. It's super easy to use and you can even send people a digital invoice after you complete the sale. And the money is in your bank account in like two days. So I would definitely recommend this. And it's always a good idea to bring an inventory list so you can keep track of your sales. Especially if you sell multiples like limited edition prints. And obviously you want to bring enough packaging material and gift bags so people can bring their purchases home with them. Things like bubble wrap, scissors and tape should definitely be part of your kit. Now that your booth is all set up and ready for sales, there's also a couple of things that you want to bring to make yourself more comfortable. First of all, a chair. Now you don't want to be sitting down the entire time because you want to be engaging and you want to talk to people about your work. But being able to sit down for just a couple of minutes, especially at the end of the day, is going to make your weekend so much better. Some other things you don't want to forget are sunscreen, a cooler with drinks, food or money for food, a hat, sunglasses, painkillers in case of a headache and a change of clothes in case of rain. And then there are little things like twine, uh, some basic tools like a screwdriver, some screws, a wire cutter, tagger, loads of extra tie wraps, some clothes pins, some paper towels and some extra pens and pencils. And last but not least, don't forget your camera. You should definitely take loads of pictures to share on your website and your social media pages. Now if you are curious to see my booth at the Toronto Outdoor Art Exhibition, you can check out my video. I hope this information will help you prepare for your next event. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to post them. And as always, shares, likes and subscribers are always welcome. Thank you very much for watching this video. I will see you all in two weeks with more creative ramblings. In the meantime, stay creative. Bye!